Hey, this is Brian. I just wanted to uh, take this time to go over some issues with the interquartile range that I've been thinking about recently. Something that is, definitely comes up in introductory stats courses. Um, and hopefully this presentation will show that although the interquartile range is uh, can, can be considered robust in that it's not uh, it's not a statistic that's going to be affected by the extremely low or extremely high values in your data. It is not well defined. So let's take a look. Uh, no, I mean, it seems like it's well defined. I think this is the definition you'll find everywhere in every textbook. The interquartile range is the difference between the third and the first quartile, um, which is uh, at the face of it, it's, there's no argument about this, um, but then the question then is like, what is the third quartile and what is the first quartile? So those are those are seemingly pretty well under, understood, well defined, but you'll find that there's actually some issues. So people say that the first quartile is the 25th percentile, the third quartile is the 75th percentile, which is to say that the first quartile is a value that's going to cut off the lower 25% from the rest of the data. And the third quartile is the is this cutoff where it cuts off the lower 75% of the data. Um, which in principle isn't a big problem, but once you have numbers, uh, it, it can be unclear about exactly what you want to do. Some textbooks will say that the first quartile is the median of the lower half of the data, and the third quartile is the median of the upper half of the data, which seems OK too. Um, but let's take a look. Um, so if there's an odd number of data, the median, uh, so this is just to go over what exactly a median is, right? So, and there's no, there's no problem with this. The median is that value in the middle. So uh, for this first set of data, we have, uh, we have nine numbers. And so the number 32 is the fifth largest number. Uh, there's four numbers that are bigger than it, four numbers that are lower than that. So 32 is the median. No problem there. If there's an even number of data, the median is defined as the average of the middle two values. So here there are only eight numbers and so the 11 and the 32 are the two numbers that live in the middle. So to find the median we need to average the 11 and the 32 and so we're going to get uh, 21.5 if I'm not mistaken. Um, that's what, 43 divided by 2. OK, now the question is, what is the lower half of the data? If we want to find the median of the lower half of the data, well, if there's an even number, the lower half and the upper half are straightforward, right? You, you have eight numbers here. There's four numbers that are in the lower half of the data. There's four numbers in the upper half. We already know how to find the median of four numbers done no question about it if there's an odd number the sticking point is what do we do with that 32 we can either um, include the 32 in both the upper and lower half or exclude it from both the upper and the lower half or even do something weird um, generally people will textbooks will say to exclude the median from the upper and lower half. So in that case, the lower half is um, going to be these lower four numbers and the upper half is the upper four numbers. So the, actually the, your your quartile one and quartile three are going to be found um, just use it, finding the median of uh, these two small sets. So the average of the five and the nine is seven. The average of the 66 and the 67 is 66.5. So. Um, if we're excluding the median, the interquartile range is the difference between those two numbers, which is 59.5. If we include the median in both, then the median of e the lower half is actually going to be the third largest number, that 9, and the median of the upper half of the data is going to be the number 66. So in this case, our interquartile range uh, is going to be 66 minus the 9, so that gives us 57 for the interquartile range. Um, and now let, let's think, the 
the que then we could think about the question of what exactly is the 25th percentile. And here we get into an even bigger issue. So if we're going to take the, the first quartile to be the 25th percentile, we have to look at what is the definition of a percentile. And oh no, there's not one single definition of percentile. You can look this up. There are a lot of different ways that people have defined percentiles. Um, there's the nearest rank method. There's linear interpolation. There's linear interpolation between closed ranks. There is uh, three variants on this method. And then there's actually a lot of different formulas that are used to estimate quantiles, uh, which are, um, which can be, I mean, the 25th percentile is the first quartile. So there are various quartile estimation formulas. And so we can look at all of those. The nearest rank method, uh, in the nearest rank method, we the pth percentile is the smallest value x in the data such that no more than p percent is less than x, and at least p percent is less than or equal to x. So that's, this is, gives us a, a unique value. So um, if you just look at the numbers, 1, 5, 9, 11, 32, these were in the, the data set with nine numbers. Each of these values is a percentile. So the number one is the 11.11th percentile. This is, or one over nine. I mean, it's, it's, there's nine values, so one ninth, um, and so forth. So, so the 25th percentile is the number nine because there are, um, because no more than 25% of the data is less than the number nine. Um, and at least 25% of the data is less than or equal to 9, right? Um, and so 9 is the 25th percentile by this, by this method, by this definition. Uh, likewise, the 75th percentile is going to be the number 66 because no more than 75% of the data is less than 66, and at least 75% uh, of the data is less than or equal to the number 66. So in this case, the IQR, the interquartile range, would be calculated as 57. The method of linear interpolation between closest ranks is the idea that you, you calculate a percentile rank for each of the numbers, and then if for any given percentile that you want, you just find, well, if it's, if, um, if you want to find, if you know what the, if you know what the 13th percentile is, and you know what the, uh, what the 19th percentile is, then the 16th percentile should be halfway between those. So you'd like average them. So you 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 calculate a weighted average between the percentile percentiles. Well, there are three methods, and they all come from these formulas. I'm just going to cutting to the chase a little bit. Um, the first variant you'll see this uh, on Wikipedia. You use a value a constant value of one half in the formula, and so this is what it looks like. The percent rank. Um, given a rank x, the percent rank is calculated by 100 over n, the, the total sample size, times the rank minus a half. So the percentile ranks are given uh, as, uh, as shown here. And so the 25th percentile would be interpolated uh, as um, it's going to be, in fact, the... So it's going to be between the numbers 5 and 9, right? It turns out that 25th percentile is exactly um, three quarters of the way between 16.67 uh, and 27.78. These are rounded off a little bit. But anyway, um, so you end up doing a weighted average between those numbers 5 and 9, and you actually get 8 as the 25th percentile using this method. The 75th percentile is interpolated similarly, uh, and it is found to be 66.25. It's uh, one quarter of the way between, the 75 is one quarter of the way between 72.22 and 83.33. So in this case, the interquartile range would be 58.25. Now, if you let c equals 1, which is a different uh, variant, you get a different formula, and you get different percentiles. Uh, so the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile are going to be just those values of 9 and 66. So now we get an IQR of 59. Uh, and if we use the third variant, where c equals 0, then we get uh, totally different uh, totally different. Um, percentiles, we have 7 and 66.5 as our 
uh, percentiles for the, the our two quartiles. So we calculated IQR of 59.5. Uh, and then to make, to make things even more complicated, if you look on Wikipedia, uh, there are nine methods listed that are used in, sci in the statistical literature and in various uh, software packages for estimating quantiles. So if you wanted to estimate the first quartile or th and the, the third quartile, this is the formula that various softwares are gonna use. And so let me show you what this would mean. For this set of data, uh, using these nine methods, uh, you calculate a different value for H, and then you calculate your first quartile and your third quartile. And uh, for the first method, for example, you get the first quartile is 9, and the third quartile is 66. So you calculate 57 is your interquartile range. Um, and for some of them, there's not much difference, but the third rep method, you can see there's it's vastly different. You get a... Uh, interquartile range of 40, and if you look at the seventh method, the interquartile range is calculated at a whopping 83.5, which is more than double that. And so although that most of the time it hovers around uh, somewhere from 55 to 60, you can see a great uh, variety of interquartile ranges from all of these methods. So here's really what it comes down to. What is the what is the correct interquartile range for this data set? We have nine numbers. It shouldn't be that hard to find the interquartile range, right? But look at all the possible values, 40, 54.75, 56, 57, uh, all the way up to 83.5. What is the correct interquartile range? Well, well, the, the, the bottom line is there is no correct interquartile range. Or there, or in, or, in, in other words, all of them are correct, which is very unsatisfying. Um, and so you can defend each one of them as being correct in a sense, but it also just leads to the fact that the interquartile range is not well-defined. And for a sm especially for small data sets, you could get very different interquartile ranges depending on the calculator you use, depending on the software you're using or the method you're using. And not one of them is, is objectively correct and the others aren't objectively wrong. Um, and this is uh, one, of the, one of the big ambiguous uh, or ambiguity problems in statistics today that there's no one single convention for what is the correct interquartile range. Uh, so I just wanted to leave you with that. And if your professor likes one method over another, then the best thing to do is to just do what they say and get through your statistics class. Or you could argue that there are a lot of different ways of interpreting the definition of interquartile range. Um, and if you have your method, uh, you can argue that it is correct from that perspective. Uh, I am personally of the opinion that all of them are, that, there's, that it is, uh, it's not constructive to be really strict about the interquartile range. The point is that we're roughly dividing the data into quarters, right? And so, um, so anyway, th this is a problem. It's it's messy, uh, and although a lot of a lot of statistics is straightforward and well defined, this is one area where it is not. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed. Hope this was interesting, and I'll uh, I'll be making another video later.